and welcome back to Flora on Food, coming to you live from the beautiful island of Sardinia. What a fantastic location we have found to film and today's recipe is as epic as our wild camp spot. Some of you eagle-eyed Instagram followers may recognise this recipe from our Instagram story. I gave it a bit of a test out and it had such an amazing response, I think it best that I make its own dedicated video recipe. As you may be aware, in Flora we have no electrical kitchen gadgets, so today's recipe may be a little bit of a faff and create quite a bit of washing up. But talking of faff, let's welcome my kitchen assistant, Cal. After such lovely feedback from the potato bread challenge, we know you want him grafting a bit more in the kitchen. So, without further ado, let's get cracking. Head over to our website to find the full recipe and ingredients. The link will be down in the description below. So, travelling around Europe in our tiny home, I do not carry a loose bottom cake tin. I'm not a mad woman. Instead, I'm going to be using a frying pan, but you can pretty much use anything. Ideas that I've come up with is doing it straight into glasses, which are perfect for presentation, or you could even do it straight into a lunchbox and use a fish slice to just lift the pieces out. But I'm gonna go circular frying pan with a few cardboard inserts. So I'm going to show you how I do it now. Using a cereal box, I draw around the frying pan to make a circular base and wrap it in foil for tidy presentation. I also make foil wrapped sidewalls to allow for extra cheesecake height. Adding two extra cardboard circles will make the base more rigid. In between, I add folded foil to help me lift the cheesecake out of the pan, a bit like a sling. You don't have to go to these lengths at home, but it does help make the end result look more professional. First step is to melt the butter. At home, I just pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds or even less than that. But here, we're going to pop it into a jam jar and then put it in some warm water, not boiling water because it might crack the jam jar and set it aside until the butter is totally melted and runny. So whilst the butter is melting, we're going to crush up the biscuits to make the base. These ones are gluten-free coconut biscuits and taste rather nice as they are. You can use digestives or ginger nuts if you fancy a little bit of ginger in your cheesecake base. Options are you can crush them in a food processor until they come into a sandy consistency or you can mash them up. You can bash them with a rolling pin, but I'm going to seal this bag up and then hand it over to Cal to take out his frustrations on. I think we'll probably use the bottom of a jam jar or a masher, so I'll give him options and we'll see which one he uses. Thank you, darling, that is absolute perfection. So we're now going to pour these biscuit crumbs into a bowl and add the melted butter and combine. So now we're gonna add our mixture to our makeshift cake pan and compact into a firm cheesecake biscuit base. So now we're on to making the cheesecake mixture itself. First of all, we're gonna melt the chocolate. So normally at home, I'd probably use the microwave and do it quite gently, but no microwave in flora, so we're gonna do it on the hob. So I'm gonna place all of the chocolate into an enamel metal bowl. Make sure it's enamel, metal or glass. Don't use plastic, please, please, please. And pop it over a pan of hot water, making sure that the bottom of the bowl doesn't touch the surface of the water and that will gently melt the chocolate. Bit chefy, I know, but uh, needs must for making a chocolate cheesecake. So now grab your largest mixing bowl. No, nope, I don't have a mixing bowl either, so we're using my biggest and best pan. Jack, if you're watching, this is my favorite pan in the van. 
from Danelle. It's got a heavy bottom, it's just massive and just cooked very nicely. So we're going to now whisk the whipping cream. I'm adding 250 ml of the Italian version of UHT whipping cream. It's the best I could find and works pretty well for this recipe. So I think I might have to add a bit of this one too. Don't whip the cream too much, otherwise it's gonna to be too stiff and we're relying on the chocolate to set the cheesecake. And now we're going to add the cream cheese and the zest of two oranges to the whipped cream mixture. Once the chocolate is melted, remove from the heat and allow it to cool slightly. Add the chocolate to the cream mixture and combine quickly to avoid the chocolate from cooling and forming lumps. Once combined, pour or spoon over the mixture on top of the cheesecake base, making sure it's level and even, giving it a little tap to remove the air bubbles. So now it's time to refrigerate the cheesecake and this is the contraption we are using today. The cool box turned on its side. Not ideal, but it's the only piece of electrical equipment we need for this recipe, although this is not ideal and pretty basic. And now it's just a waiting game for it to set and I think we better do the washing up. The cheesecake has been in the fridge for the last few hours. Ideally, I'd like it there overnight, but we're gonna eat it tonight, so there's no need for that. And I'm gonna decorate it now in the only way I know how. It's gonna be a bit OTT, but I think it's gonna be worth it. So I'm gonna put some fresh orange, some cherries, and some picked wild chamomile flowers, which I found on our little camping spot, which I've washed and uh, dried out, ready to pop on top. So. Let's see if it's a success and if it's set long enough, which I think it is. So now we need to get it out of its little contraption tin, which these, these things are what I'd like to use. So ideally I'd like Cal's hands at this point, but he is otherwise engaged. Right, ready? It's as if she's done it before. Woo. Right. Now I'm going to remove all of the foil bits. I must admit this gluten-free biscuit base is a little more crumbly compared to using regular digestives. So much so I decided not to remove the cardboard base. The end result was light and mousse-like, with plenty of orange flavour and chocolatey richness. As I mentioned before, this recipe is a faff, especially if you're living in a tiny home on wheels like we are. But homemade, luxurious and indulgent camper van cheesecake is so worth it. It's safe to say our fellow dinner party guests enjoyed it too. So that was my chocolate and orange camper van cheesecake and it was absolutely delicious. I've really missed like good British puddings. I think it's worthwhile pointing out that our cool box is only capable of so much chilling. So I think it'd be better off if you left it in the fridge and preferably overnight it would set a lot firmer. I can't quite decide which cheesecake looks better. The pink flowery topped one that I tried out at Camp Lockdown or today's cherry and chamomile topped one. Let me know in the comment section below. If you have made any of our recipes, including this one, please let us know. And if you'd like to send us a picture, 
or even better, tag us in it on Instagram at VW underscore Flora with the hashtag Flora on Food. We would really love to see your creations. So that's it for us today and we'll see you in the next one. Tickle pip.